For round two, board one in Austria, we have Farron Jane, England, Peter McNamara, France, Craig Mayer, Germany, Stephen Hogue, Italy, JJ Raymond, Russia, Tim Jones, and in Turkey, we have Chris Campbell. Uh, lots of players that are, uh, Peter's probably safe for his DBNI ranking, uh, barring something unexpected. Uh, Craig and Stephen, uh, they're definitely going to be hungry for, uh, for some points to make sure they're securing their position. So, uh, Brandon, we will bring this up. And if you can help bring that clock over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for some reason, it does not let me switch screens. And, Brandon, you are on the clock. All right. This game is um, relatively straightforward as it works out. I'm going to give away the punchline right here and tell you that Farron is the one who comes out of this ocean of sharks. Um, she uh, uh, it, uh, does a magnificent job of um, of working the East. So uh, uh, well, 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 I'll tell you how things shake out here initially. It looks like, first of all, she gets the jump on um, Tim Jones and Galicia. Tim Jones, by the way, is a longtime player uh, out of Australia. He's one of the, the web dips and uh, web, uh, mods and developers for web dip. Um, and I met him. He came to Chicago in 2016. I'm losing time by getting talking about anecdotes. <laughs> Tim is a very good player. That's all I meant to say. Anyway, uh, Farron gets the jump on him. They apparently uh, agreed to DMZ Galicia. She gets in anyway, but then backtracks. And this is, I think, one moment in which uh, Farron demonstrates a strategic flexibility um, that serves her really, really well this game. So move ahead into fall of 1902, uh, and you'll see another dose of strategic flexibility here. Um, Farron uh, <laughs> apparently doesn't do what Tim expected uh, her to do and gets both Romania and Warsaw here. So this is a moment where Farron gets the upper hand on an ally. Um, and uh, um, uh, and, and uh, this will serve uh, her well as she goes on. What's remarkable here, um, and uh, uh, really quickly on the West, the um, uh, in the West, the West shakes out into uh, a fairly straightforward alliance. Peter and Craig work together against uh, Stephen, and they they eliminate him in short order. So uh, you can move ahead here. Fall of 1904 is the um, uh, is the next moment to look at. So one of the things that's remarkable here, as we see 1903 um, pass, is that Tim does not react really badly to uh, Farron's stab of him. This is, I think, one of the key aspects of this game, that Farron manages to keep Tim on side and gets uh, gets him to convoy her into Constantinople to help take out Turkey. This is the crucial thing as far as the relationship in, uh, in the, up in the, the east goes. The second part of this is that Farron um, keeps Italy on side. And as Craig moves into the Mediterranean, Italy is forced to, uh, to fight Craig instead of holding back Farron. So you can move ahead now. <coughs> what you see, and you can just keep moving ahead with the turns here. What you see here is that the, the West, the, the EF, works out in such a way that they keep Russia, they force Russia to stay pinned down. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Stop, stop right here. Russia stays alive in 1905 in Belgium, which is truly delightful. <laughs> Germany stays alive in London. I'm going to run out of time while I'm coughing. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's skip to the end of the game here. Fall of 1907. This is where um, this is where Farron wins this game. Um, coming into this moment, uh, she is behind. Uh, so um, uh, e, so Peter and Craig in England and France are both on nine. Farron is on eight. But what they uh, and, and then and then there's a mad scramble. So we should say that the games end in 1907. There's a mad scramble for dots. Uh, in the end, and uh, Craig and Peter in England and France turn on each other while Farron mops up, picking up four dots in 1907 to go from eight to 12. Um, Peter ends up getting one, netting one off of Craig to go to 10, which gets him a little bit of the share of the points in Bangkok. But what, what has happened here is that, um, first of all, Farron has navigated the, ta the, the she's done ta made several tactical uh, guesses that worked out really well navigated the um, the strategic situation in the East by keeping both her allies and her opponents on her side, while E and F in the West um, keep any, any possibility of holding her back um, at bay by fighting the people who could be helping them against her. So I think they, they did not realize 
how strong her position had become as the game was going on, maybe distracted by the center count. Doug, anything to add to that? Yeah, I thought that was a, a great summary, Brandon. Um, you know, the boy, the you know, the that early move where she gets Romania and Warsaw was so important for the long term game. Um, and the other thing that you touched on that I thought was really decisive for against Peter and Craig was losing Belgium and London in a time limited game to the powers that they're trying to eliminate to top this board, you know, just put them so far behind the curve. And uh, Farron's play was so strong in the East and the flexibility that was displayed and the opportunity at the end was really strong. And I also want to single out a really smart tactical play here, which was propping Italy up, you know, giving Trieste over, knowing that, you know, you could retake that again. I think the, that this was a really, really well played game here uh, by Farron. Yeah, and I, th I just I think the thing that surprised me, um, I mean, Farron is a relative unknown. I think uh, I think Farron played in uh, Tempest, um, but we're still learning about uh, about their abilities here. And uh, apart from the really strong play on that side of the board, I was just surprised that Peter and Craig sort of kept at the, in the same direction, which was clearly going to help Austria. Um, that you know, two players of their caliber didn't recognize that um, and shift directions in some way. It may it may have been that, you know, they were just kind of keeping an eye on each other and, um, you know, they know that they're both good players. They both, you know, uh, had a presence in these tournaments online and, and maybe they just felt like, well, we, you know, we got to keep this between us here. And you, you never know how that works out sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be a situation where they're both they both think that if they fight each other, Austria wins, even if it's the case that if they don't fight each other, Austria wins. Right. Right. Just just the particular balance on the board. Yeah, Brandon, uh, 1907 is a is a kind of an awkward year to end games of diplomacy, right. um, but we've got a lot of experience with that. Uh, in the Chicago hobby, we play uh, monthly games uh, that are time limited and usually go around 1907. And uh, yeah, that last second grab that we saw at the end is very typical, but it does create an interesting dynamic where you're always questioning, like, it does it make more sense for me to go against my ally and knowing that the opposite theater may grow as a result of that. Um, and that's a, it's a tough choice that's created by the time limit. And uh, it's, I, I think if, if Farron doesn't make some good guesses here at the end, uh, it might have paid off for the West. So. Yeah, fall, fall of 1907, in fact, she makes a good guess against uh, Italy here. It wasn't guaranteed that uh, that she would pick one up off of Italy that does. Yeah. Sometimes um, that's what happens. And, you know, I, I do want to flag for future rounds here um, uh, for future boards. You know, Europeans play a lot of C Dip Diplo um, or this kind of time limited game where you ended a certain year. Um, and most of the American hobby does not play this well. So I'll be curious to see if that impacts people's play as well. Yeah, I, I'll add one thing. So Brian and I do have a lot of experience with time limited games where you you have a rough idea going into 1905, whether you're going to get to 1907 or not, but it's not it's not guaranteed. The thing that we learned that I think players who don't normally play time or year limited games may not realize is that it's not just about the last year. You have to set yourself up for the grab in the last year. So you have to be thinking at least two years ahead of time. Absolutely. Yeah.